move towards multiplication of microorganisms. As we discussed briefly in the second video, that microorganisms do not grow in size, they grow in number. And that phenomenon is called as binary fission, where one bacteria will become two and two become four. Through this phenomena, microorganisms increase their numbers and as quickly as in 10 minutes, one bacteria can double itself. And if you go, go through this growth rate, in 10 hours, you can have as many as 10 billion microorganisms. One of the most fastest growing bacteria could be E. coli, which takes 10 to 12 minutes or sometimes 15 minutes to double itself. If all the resources are available, in good condition. So what are the resources which microorganisms need to grow? They are again very simple, food, moisture, proper temperature and time. These are the four biggest factors which are necessary for the growth of bacteria. If these factors are not there or these requirements are not there, then microorganism will not grow. In addition to that, there are two small things as well, which are oxygen level and pH, which is the acidity level. Think about this, for example, a pickle which has high concentration of acid in it can stay on room temperature for a very long time without getting any spoilage and growth of microorganisms because the pH is controlling the bacteria or microorganism and it is not allowing it to grow. So I just want to give you here some more examples about multiplication. Temperature control. The reason why we put all the items in chillers and freezers during storage is because of temperature control the temperature low temperatures stop the growth of bacteria they do not kill bacteria but they stop their growth similarly at high temperatures also microorganisms cannot grow one more thing to understand here is time if we leave food at room temperature then we need to consume it in quick time so that again we do not allow microorganisms to have ample amount of time to grow if the time is not there then bacteria don't have enough time to multiply into large quantity and cause illness inside the body of the person. So coming to the controls, some of it already I have discussed with you. So don't give time to microorganisms to multiply. If you want to keep food, keep it at high temperatures above 60 degrees Celsius or low temperatures. Reduce moisture by using dehydration methods uh, like salt or sugar. Salt is one of the oldest methods of controlling spoilage from microorganisms. In very olden days also, people used to apply salt or spices on the food to dehydrate it and as a result, uh, they can store it for a long time. Then chemical preservatives are there. Acid as we discussed already in the pickle example, uh, it can be used as well. So vacuum packing is a uh, technique to remove oxygen from the packaging of the food. Through this, we can increase the shelf life of the food, but for these packs also, we need to store them in the chiller because there are bacteria which can grow without oxygen as well. They are called as anaerobic bacteria. We'll talk about them later on in detail. So this diagram shows what happens to microorganisms at different temperatures. You can see here very clearly at lower temperatures where uh, temperature is less than zero or around zero, the microorganisms do not grow because they are dormant. Around zero to five, there is very slow growth and mainly spoilage microorganisms can grow at that temperature. Pathogens don't grow uh, less than five degrees Celsius. Then from five to 60, this is called as danger zone. In danger zone, microorganisms can grow very, very fast and uh, do spoilage of food and or increase their numbers if they are pathogens and then later on cause disease in the body of the uh, consumer. Between 20 to 50, it is called as rapid multiplication and this is the most, uh, you can say, this is the most beneficial temperature for the growth of bacteria. Above 60 degrees Celsius, uh, microorganisms start to die because their enzymes starts to become denatured and at higher temperatures above 75 and towards 100, many of the bacteria or microorganisms die. However, there are some bacteria which can survive these temperatures through spores. The spores we will discuss in the survival topic of this video. Okay, so how do we control microorganisms and how do we control their spread? We discuss in contamination. For multiplication control, we have discussed their control as well. 
Now, how do we kill bacteria or how do we destroy them? So one of the most easiest method of doing that is to do cooking. Thorough cooking kills microorganisms. Other methods are like pasteurization, sterilization. All these are heat treatment methods of food and through which we can kill microorganisms. Other methods of killing bacteria are chemical like chemical sanitation. We can use also radiation like gamma rays and also UV light which is very common in UV filters where we kill and uh, reduce the quantity of microorganisms in water. We are coming to the third and the last topic of this video which is the survival hazard. Survival is the phenomena to avoid death. Very very few amount of microorganisms have the ability to survive. They do so through spore formation. Let's talk about that one. Spores are resistant resting phase of bacteria. They can survive high temperatures, freezing temperatures, chemicals, dehydration. Uh, in the same time, they cannot grow because spores are like particles and they have no ability to grow. So they are only a survival mechanism, not a multiplication mechanism. So take example of a beef stew. In this beef stew, there is a lot of microorganisms. When we start cooking this beef and the temperature goes high, microorganisms start to die. But there will be some bacteria which will form spores like this mechanism. And the spore will be released out of the bacterial body and the bacteria will die itself and the spore will survive. So a bacterial spore cannot do anything. It is a particle, it cannot cause infection, it cannot grow by itself. But if good conditions or suitable conditions come back, then there's a problem. So let's suppose I eat food item and in that food item there are hundreds of spores of bacteria, nothing will happen to me because inside the body also the suitable environment is not there. However, on the other hand, let's suppose after cooking, we left the food outside for a long time and there is already food there moisture is also there and after leaving it for long time in room temperature the temperature comes down and the temperature is suitable for the growth of bacteria which is the danger zone and time and everything else is also suitable then this spore will germinate and after germination it will give rise to a vegetative living bacteria and this bacteria will now start to multiply which is a problem now the number one reason of food poisoning all around the world is leaving the food at room temperature for a long time after cooking. Nobody gets food poisoning from raw food guys. Please remember that. Nobody consumes raw food. Have you ever eaten raw chicken? So you will never get food poisoning from raw food. Food poisoning happens from ready to eat food items which are left on room temperature for a long time. Or it can happen from cross contamination as well. But number one reason is allowing the food to stay at room temperature and allowing spores to germinate and then bacteria to multiply. An addition problem with this kind of scenario is that some of the pathogenic microorganisms can cause or they can produce toxins. Toxins are poison produced by bacteria. These are the byproduct of growth or multiplication. When microorganisms consume food and they multiply, they have to produce some kind of byproduct or a waste. This acts as toxin in our body and there are a lot of various different side effects of these toxins. Some of these toxins are heat resistant and cannot be destroyed through heating. So, last point again, how do you control the spores? The spores cannot be controlled, they will be there. If the bacteria has the ability to form a spore, it will form the spore. But the good thing is that spores are not dangerous. What we need to do is that after cooking, we do not allow multiplication of bacteria and these are the controls of multiplication which we have already discussed. So just to put everything in perspective, after cooking, do not let the food stay in room temperature for a long time. Either consume it fast, which means control of time, or do cooling rapidly so that you can reduce the temperature fast and then store it in a chiller or a freezer where again you control the temperature and time. If we allow the food to stay at room temperature and slowly cool down, and we, then we give opportunity to the store, spores to 
germinate and then bacteria to multiply and then they can also make toxins last but not the least most most important point of this whole video today pathogens do not spoil the food that's why they are called as pathogens pathogens cause disease they do not show any signs or symptoms in the food the food taste will be same smell will be same but after consumption the body will have disease that's why these are called as pathogens on the other side spoilage bacteria they have no interest in causing disease so they spoil the food they make the food having bad smell sliminess and stickiness and that's why we don't consume that food item so if the food looks okay it does not mean it is 100% okay we need to control all the scenarios we need to control multiplication and contamination for the food to be really safe so this brings us to the end of our topic of microorganisms if you enjoyed this content please subscribe to our channel and like the video press the bell icon so that you can get timely updates in the next video we'll talk about further more series of uh, discussion in basic food safety see you in the next one thank you Thank you.